Bruce Lipton, the, the show this week is really themed around social consciousness and how we can elevate that if we're in a good state of health. But it does tie in with what you were talking about last week, which is this idea of sudden human change being possible. Talk to me more about that. We first have to understand where does our behavior come from? Because behavior is how we're going to use our biology. An appropriate behavior, then we have good health and vitality. And inappropriate behavior ultimately leads to disease. I say, well, where's behavior? You can say, well, some of it is programmed by genes that are instincts. In other words, if a ball comes toward my face, I will blink automatically, no consciousness to it. It's a behavior built in. But all the more complex behaviors in life outside those simple instincts are acquired learning. Okay? So how do I behave? I say, well, first of all, I have to have a program, a behavioral program. I said, well, interestingly enough, when a child is born, it has no behavioral program. It just got here. How does it know what to do? You say, hey, there's a red light, kid. Stop running here. Or, you know, it's like, that makes no sense. So an individual child in our world has to grow up with knowledge, okay? And using that knowledge, then we create a lifestyle and a behavior. And the most important understanding is this. It didn't come from within the individual child. The child downloads it by living in the environment and watching other people. So an infant, when it's born, is not even uh, expressing consciousness, the activity of consciousness in its brain. That is a later development. And around age seven, consciousness kicks in. So it's just on survival, really? It's on... actually just on uh, you know, stimulus response, more or less, stimulus at that point. Response. Okay. But also, the brain is observing the environment and recording. So a child's brain is like a camcorder on record for seven years. I said, well, what's it recording? Its primary program as an infant is to, first thing a child learns is to read the face of the mother and read the face of the father. First thing, within days, a couple of days, the child will be able to pick out the mother from anybody else in the room. The and face and the voice, I The presume. face, but, but the face is more important than the voice for this reason. Because you can show a bunch of people, you, you show them pictures of faces, and you say, is that a happy face? Is that an angry face? A sad face? You can read the face, okay? I say, why is it relevant? Because a child actually has no directions as to what is safe and what's not safe. A child is built with the uh, system, uh, an instinct, to look at the mother and the father, look at their faces. So within the first week, it reads faces. Not just who is who, but it understands what a happy face looks like, it understands what a, an afraid face looks like. And I say, why is it relevant? Because people don't recognize this. When that infant is exploring the world, they don't no notice that. The first thing the infant does when it comes across something new is look at the mother or the father. Reason. Something new. Is this good for me or bad for me? Instinct says, I have no idea. How would I know? Look at the face of the mother and father. If the mother or father goes, oh, like, you know, like afraid, like, oh, they're at the stairway and they're going to fall down, they give that look of, oh, the child immediately will recognize not to go near the stairway because it already has connected the face and the object and said, this object creates fear. Or it comes across a toy and, and the parents look at it and like encourage it, like, you know, with, yeah, you know, smile, go. Then the child has an approval that this thing is safe. So the first thing it does is score the environment. Based on who? On the parents. But then it gets more complicated because as it starts to acquire language, it also observes more complex behavior. It sees how the father responds, let's say, uh, and learns the behavior by what? Recording it. It's not learning it like school, open up a book and study. It's simpler than that. All it has to do is observe it, record it, goes into subconscious and becomes a behavior. Okay? So the relevance about that is the child always looks to the behavior of the parents first, the siblings, and the community to see how they should, be, how they should behave. I mean, just think about it. If we were making a rule book, what rules do I need to become a functional member of a family? What rules do I need to become a functional member of a community? And all of a sudden you say, my God, these are thousands of rules. I go, ah, ah, teach an infant thousands of rules. Sit there like in a classroom, try to hold it up in a chair and say, listen, I'm going to give you a thousand rules. And the answer is you can't do that. Nature took care of it. What did nature do? I observed the parents. I can see that my father talks to me different than my father talks to other people's kids. 
My father talks to me different than he talks to adults. Then he talks to my mother. Then he talks to the policeman. It's like, oh my God, there are nuances right there, half a dozen ways that my father could talk. Well, I learn by what? Just watching how my father does it. So the behavior that I first experienced, which is programmed in my subconscious mind for seven years, that's how long the record process, my brain is operating in a lower vibrational frequency. When, when you put wires on a person's head, you read vibrations called electroencephalograph, EEG, different levels of vibration. First seven years, the vibration is below consciousness as predominant. And I say, but if it's below consciousness, then what, what's the child doing? I say, ah, theta is the vibration level for predominant level. And I say, what's that? Imagination? I go, yeah, children under seven mix the real world and the imaginary world because their brain operating theta is imagination. So the mother says, give me the broom. The child is riding it, looking at the mother like, I don't even know what you're talking about. I'm on a horse. Uh, and so imagination is overridden reality. But theta is hypnosis. So that means first seven years, I download. By what? Not any more than just observing and then lodging that behavior into my subconscious. So even before you become conscious, you have a database of behavior. Well, if they're good behaviors, great. If they're negative behaviors, yeah, you got those as well, too. <laughs> and, and, and the idea was, how'd you get it? By just observing the individual, okay? Two things that strike me there, the importance of possibly even before conception or conception to, to seven years, those are possibly the most important years of a human's life. Absolutely, because those are the years that will determine the outcome of the child. And, and you say, well, is this new science? I go, science-wise, it's new because I can show you the mechanisms now. Is the idea new? I go, 400 years, the Jesuits have said, give me a child until it's seven and I will show you the man. People didn't understand, what are they boasting about? That's what irritated me, because I realize now it's boasting. It says, if I get to program your first seven years, I determine the outcome of your life. John, you deal a lot with the, the support of women who want to have healthy children, but this has a whole, whole other angle to it, doesn't it? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, we've got charts on this that we take our clients through and we show them these stages of development and we discuss the importance of so a lot of the care we're doing is with young women and preparing them so when they have children they actually understand this sort of thing yeah and you know for myself you know practically with my own grandchildren I've been trying to train my children particularly my daughter around things like this so we're well aware of what Bruce is talking about and we have systems in place and we have a whole range of therapists trained in their individual modalities that can actually help nurture somebody through these stages whether it's the mother with the child or the child itself and so as much we're doing as therapy is education and training. Because so, the second thing that stri struck me from what Bruce said is the horrors for a child of being in a traumatic home. And we have a very <laughs> high incidence in this country of child abuse. So the implications are absolutely horrendous of the programming that's going on. Yeah. You know, it would be interesting if it was only in this country, but oh. this is a, a, is a global problem. Uh, and, and, and the whole idea is this, if parents have no idea that their behavior is programming their child's life, then th no responsibility to behave in any particular way. And, and they don't see that they are modeling the future of our planet. Yeah. So how, Bruce, how do we, or John, how do we, how do we help parents with this? Well, there's a whole lot of repatterning therapies and programs in place, and there are numerous of them. And a lot of them are mind-body, some of them trauma relief type stuff. And again, you know, with training, just as you can, as we're saying, yeah. what makes you sick can also make you well if you reverse the process. And some of it's just playing this over and over on the internet and understanding what this is, what you're uh, explaining. Bruce. Knowledge is power. If you had no knowledge that you were shaping the future of civilization by being a parent, then your behavior would be irrelevant. But if you all of a sudden know that what you're doing is going to change the health and, and fate of your child by how you're behaving, all of a sudden it says, oh, wait. Conscious parenting, that's a responsibility. Thank you so much. We will leave that there, but there is obviously more of it in The Biology of Belief, Bruce's other book, Spontaneous Evolution and The Honeymoon Effect. Bruce, we'll talk to you next week. Thank you, Thank Dr. You. Bruce Lipton.